Good afternoon. Uh, we are at the East Coast Large Scale Train Show, and this is a presentation about unique electronic devices you can make. Oh, by the way, in the, the corner down there, it says this presentation is available online both at trainelectronics.com, which is my train electronics website, or davebodner.com, so you don't need to take any notes. You may, but the slides are there. The blurb that uh, I was asked to create for the literature, this one doesn't have any spelling errors in it. Okay, about me, make that nice and quick. Retired from public education. I've only been an active model railroader for about six years. I have to keep changing that. It used to be four and then five, okay. Uh, other hobbies, electronics for a long time. I can remember tearing things apart as a child and having my uncle who was, owned an appliance store put them back together for me. Uh, ham radio, woodworking, computers, programming have been hobbies for a long time. I think I learned to program back in the um, probably the mid-70s and, and every bit of that you learn is better and it, it's really prepared me to do a lot of the things I'm doing today. Model railroading is a nice way to utilize all of those other hobbies. That's one of the reasons that I've kind of gravitated towards it. Primarily interested in using my electronic skills to enhance what can be done with a model railroad. I also spend a lot of time building custom circuits for people. Somebody will call or email me and say, I want to do this, which is kind of you know, an unusual thing, whether it be controlling two or three crossing trains or switches or whatever, and I will help them to do that. And also making presentations and writing articles about how to roll your own circuits, build stuff yourself, and that kind of satisfies my teaching instinct. Okay, speaking of teaching, you always have to have objectives, otherwise your principal would smack you. I'll provide an overview of hobbyist microcontrollers. I'll show how microcontrollers are programmed and connected to interact with railroad equipment. We will demonstrate various devices and projects that can utilize microcontroller operation and hopefully excite you with the possibilities and enable you to do a little bit of experimenting yourself. I also was a science teacher, so I have to have hypotheses. And my first hypothesis, we all have an interest in how things work, and many of us have enough knowledge of basic electronics to know that something can be done. We just need a bit of help putting all the parts together to make it happen. Second hypothesis, we already know about and have experience with, by virtue of the fact that you're here and you have a railroad, you know about batteries and power supplies doesn't mean you love them but you know about them <laughs> track wiring and motors alternating current direct current voltage amperage resistance you may not know them well but you've run across them LEDs incandescent bulbs you gotta light stuff up series and parallel circuits hopefully we know what that is Switches, relays, and I threw a bad word in there, transistors. All a transistor is is an on-off switch. That's all it is. It's nothing magical. And I also put programming in there. Yes, indeed, you do know how to program. You may not know how to program microcontrollers, but if you're using a computer and you change the settings of your computer so that your screen has a different desktop, that's programming. You're telling it to do something in a different way. Third hypothesis. Inexpensive microcontrollers allow us to optimize the basic electronic and programming knowledge that we have so that we can do some amazing, and this is the important part, and personally satisfying things. Everything I'm showing you today, almost everything, you can do with off-the-shelf stuff. You'll probably spend more, you won't be able to customize it, and right here. You know what I'm talking about. If you do it yourself, you really feel good about it. It might just be a stupid blinking light. But I did that, and if I want to blink it differently, I know how to do that. That's the big one. Okay. Hobbyist microcontrollers have been around for about 20 years, usually dedicated to a single purpose. You have one or several in your microwave. You have many in your automobile. Several that are dedicated to things like your airbag, your radio, uh, emissions controls, all of those separate devices for each of those. They're small. The ones we're working with today are about the size of my little fingernail. 
inexpensive. When I first started fooling with these things, they were about 50 bucks a piece. They're now down to about, that's not 30, that's three. Doing base 10, yeah. Okay. Programmed in BASIC. Now you can program them in other languages, but how many have a nodding acquaintance with BASIC from years ago? Oh, all right. Easy. No special programmer is needed. You don't need to buy a gizmo to program the chip. Found in many railroading devices already. If you take a look at a DCC controller that goes in an engine, that's got a microcontroller on it, I can guarantee you. And it's frequently a similar microcontroller to what we're going to be working with. 